Alright, so just as with our little trim tracing, we are going to set up our workspace first. I'm going to go ahead and create a new document. It's going to be exactly the same as previously, which is 8.5 by 11. One artboard if you have that option available. Make sure your units are set up to inches. And then let's say OK. Let's check really quickly that we have layers, swatches, colors, stroke, navigator available to us. And that our tools are expanded. And we have our control panel here on top. Okay, then we're going to bring in the actual original image of a t-shirt and that can be a hand sketch or it can be something that you found on the internet. Obviously if you're a subscriber you can just go into your exercise folder that you downloaded 0301. We're going to go ahead and lock this layer. Double click behind that name of the layer and then you can say dim images to 50%. This is especially important when your lines are going to be the same color as the original that you brought in. We are going to create a new layer and then I'm going to zoom in into the front here and then we're going to start tracing. The way I like to trace is without the fill and let me just show you why and we're going to start tracing sort of around the neckline, shoulder, arm. And then you can see as I'm going around, the white fill is following me. And it seems as if I'm hiding or losing everything underneath. And it's not as obvious because the white is the same color as our art board. And if I would use a different color, you would see it a little bit more drastically here. But we can simply say none. So make sure you fill this on top and say none. So then you can actually see a little bit better how accurately you're drawing. Okay, for a lot of you, this will be the first time using the pen tool. So here are just a couple of basics. When you use a pen tool, you can't really think of it. And this is your regular pen tool. Make sure that you're not in any of the ones that say plus or minus. You cannot expect it to work the same way as drawing by hand. A lot of times what people do is they think that they can just pull on the first one and unfortunately something is growing out of there, but these are actually direction lines that are responsible for curves. So when we start with our drawing and what I'm doing, I'm scrolling with, your, with my mouse button, mouse wheel. You can also use your space bar to move your view around. Um, what we do is we draw with our pen tool by setting our first anchor point by just clicking. Now we're very lucky that our first segment here is straight because straight lines we just have to click and then click again wherever it kind of goes into a different direction and then we're gonna click right here and then this is the first segment that's gonna be curved we're gonna take this really slow and what we need to do is just simply put our pen tool somewhere along this path where we think we can create a curve and instead of just clicking, which would create this straight line, I'm going to undo, which is control NZ or command NZ on a Mac. I'm just going to click, hold down my mouse button and very gently pull down and a little bit shift the top of my mouse towards the right. Okay. Now I know that this is one of the most terrifying experiences for a lot of people and they kind of stop pulling and if they pull too much, the whole screen moves. Just don't worry about it. Just undo and try again. Don't click on a different tool. Just press Control Z or Command Z and then try again. All right, what are we seeing here? And I'm just gonna leave this like this. What well, we're seeing one, the new anchor point, two, a direction line that's responsible for the curve we have drawn, and then there's already a direction line for the part that we did not draw yet. We are going to leave that direction line because sometimes we can deactivate it, and we're going to just press right here and pull again. Um, sometimes when our direction line looks a little bit different, like sometimes people pull and it's kind of sort of more like this. When your direction line is pulling up like this and then if you leave it, 
you get this curve that's going outward. So then sometimes people want to come back and deactivate this point and then move on. But this is really not the way to draw. So really in the beginning, when you're still new to this, kind of try to follow the way that my direction lines are represented on your video screen here. And then um, later on, obviously, you'll get better. Okay. The way that we're drawing this, we only need half. And then what we're going to do is switch to our selection tool. We're going to click on this object. And remember, there's no fill in it, so we have to click on the black part that it's going to print. And if we look at it without layer one, you can see that that's all there is to click on. And then we're going to go to Object, Transform, Reflect, Copy. And then we're going to move this over with our arrow keys on our keyboard. If it's going really slow, you can add shift and it goes twice as fast. Just pay attention that you don't miss the other side. Okay, once we have this, there's two ways of connecting these. And we are going to go with our older method of putting the color in. So we're going to need to close this object at least here. And one is just going to your pen tool. And as I mentioned before, I always say that the pen tool or any of the tools really has some whispers. So you can see here that my pen tool at first has a little X next to it. And that means I would just draw a new anchor point that has no connection to anything. However, I can um, hover my pen tool over one of these ends right here. And as I do that, you can see how my pen tool displays a little forward slash. So once I see that forward slash, I can press where I see it and that activates that last anchor point. And then I can just go over to the other end and I want to pay attention once again because you can see there's no symbol now. But when I hover over here, and I'm going to take layer one out, when I hover over here, you can see how that's like a little anchor point connector symbol. So it's telling me, okay, if you click now, you're going to make a connection. And that's precisely what I'm after. Okay, so now I made a connection. By the way, did you notice that when I'm hovering over an existing path that there's a little plus symbol? That's actually our add anchor point tool. And we can add an anchor point or when we hover over an existing anchor point, you can see how it's now becoming minus and we could take it away. So really start paying attention to what Illustrator is showing you or whispering. Okay, let's connect here on the bottom. Let's just do the same thing. We're gonna look for a slash and then we're gonna go over to the other side and here you can see that now it's actually a circle and that's because Illustrator knows that this whole path, once you make that connection, is going to be a closed path. So that's what a closed path is. Right now it's open and when we close it up, that's what we're after. Okay, that was simple. The second method of connecting an object and I'm going to just take my direct selection tool and the direct selection tool is kind of our fix it and take apart tool, which lets you click on an object. And even though it seems as if everything is selected, you're actually touching just this path. So if I press backspace or delete on my keyboard, it breaks it apart. If for some reason this is not working for you, you could also go ahead and undo until you are at the point, which is multiple control Z's or multiple command and Z's until you see this again. All right, but then still we're going to use our direct selection tool because the direct selection tool can activate individual paths or anchor points, which the selection tool ignores because it focuses on the entire object. Okay, so here we're going to click on one anchor point and you can see how this anchor point is solid. You can see that the other anchor points are all white and that means that the one that's solid is active we need to click on the second anchor point over here that we want to connect to. However, if we just click on it without adding shift, which is kind of our magical key, we just keep switching. Okay, so once again, click on one, hold down shift before you click on the second one, and then it'll blink for you in the newer versions of Illustrator. The older version, you just kind of have to hover over it and then click. And then make sure sometimes in the older versions, we kind of click behind it and we miss it. So visually just really pay attention that both of these anchor points are solid 
and then we press a shortcut, which is Control and J or Command and J. And the long way would be once you select one anchor point with a click and then hold down shift to click on the second anchor point, you could go to object path and then here you'll find your shortcut. Okay, we'll do that again down here on the bottom. Click on one anchor point with your direct selection tool, obviously hold down shift to add the second anchor point and then control and J or command and J to close. Okay, so now we are going to curve our straight path and that's easy. We're going to reveal our convert anchor point tools and our add anchor point tools. And as I said previously, if you are in your pen tool and you're hovering over an existing path, you can actually just see that the pen tool switches to a little plus. And if I click here with the top, another little tip, um, sometimes your caps lock is on. And then instead of a pen tool, you actually see a little crosshair. So let's just make sure caps lock is off and then just kind of with the top of your pen tool, it's very sensitive, um, click on the middle of the path and let's do this on the bottom as well. And then we can move our arrows on your keyboard. Just click on them and it moves the anchor point down. Once you do that to one, you can actually switch to your direct selection tool and also activate just by clicking and dragging or directly clicking on the anchor point. Once that one anchor point is active, you can move it down with your arrow keys. And then we are going to switch. So press and hold down until you see your convert anchor point tool and then start clicking and dragging once again on this anchor point. In the beginning, some of you might just kind of pull into the wrong direction. So just kind of gently unravel. And then once you start getting the feel for it, just add shift and you'll see how your handles are moving in the same distance. Let's not try to be perfectionists at first. Let's just try and practice and remember the sequence of steps and just kind of click and drag and then add shift, let go of your mouse before you let go of shift and you can still change the position of your anchor points at any time. 